What's up guys, Rogue9 here. In my last Battlefield 1 video I had quite a strong viewer response to my number one pet peeve in the game and that's the number of players that bring the large ammo crates instead of the far superior ammo pouches. So to clear up this debate once and for all, it's time to take a closer look at the support class gadgets. To keep the video length manageable, I will be covering all of the gadgets in a series of short videos rather than one stupidly long one. So to kick things off, let's go straight to the most controversial and possibly the most important topic of all, the ammo gadgets. If you saw my last Battlefield 1 video, you will know that I'm a fan of the pouches over the crates, but do the stats of these gadgets back up this opinion? Let's find out. Ammo crates and ammo pouches. Who would have guessed that people would be so passionate about this? The ammo crate versus pouch debate is older than Battlefield 1 itself and some Battlefield 1 veterans seem to be convinced that because the large packs were better in past games, it must also still be better now. But what are the actual facts? Well, in Battlefield 1 both the crates and pouches work by providing you with resupply units. So let's first understand what these units are. One resupply unit stands for the full capacity of most primary or secondary weapons. If your gun's capacity is 5, like for example some of the shotguns, 5 shells equals 1 unit. If your gun can carry 50 rounds then that will be 1 unit. The only exceptions here are the Martini Henry which has a capacity of 1 bullet but will receive 4 for each resupply unit and some of the very large capacity machine guns like the 200 round MG15 suppressive which will receive 50 bullets for each single resupply unit. For gadgets to be filled, each single gadget requires one resupply unit. So for instance refilling your tripwire mine slot will use up one unit while refilling your rocket gun ammo takes up to four units because of four shots. When picking up ammo, a player will first replenish the weapon they are currently holding in their hands. If this is already full, then the default refill order is primary, secondary, gadget number one and then gadget number two. So far so good. Now we can examine how the crates and the pouches work. As of the In the Name of the Tsar build, the crate holds a total of 20 resupply units and will give out one unit of primary or secondary ammo every 700 or 950 milliseconds. It's odd, I know, but it really does use alternating times. No clue why, but that's how it is. But I have to say that if you manage to run out of primary ammo regularly, you're either running up a really impressive KD ratio or you're being a bit wasteful with your ammo. The fact is that most of the time, you'll end up dying long before running out of bullets for your main gun. So far more important than refilling your primary and secondary ammo is refilling your gadget slots and this is where the ammo crate really falls short of the mark. It takes between 4.6 and 4.9 seconds for a single gadget to be replenished from the crate. To me that is painfully slow and what is even worse is that there appears to be a little bit of a bug in the system as well. Even though primary ammo is supposed to refill one unit in less than a second, if you have a gadget equipped i.e. in your hands, the resupply time will still be close to 5 seconds even for primary or secondary ammo. I don't believe that this can be by design so I've submitted a bug report and I hope it can be fixed in an update soon. Apart from this, the range of the crate is 3.5 meters, it can service any number of teammates that crowd around it and even work through walls. The only thing that matters is that you get close enough. Every support player can place one crate at a time which will stay where it is until either a new crate is placed, the old one is destroyed, it runs out of its 20 units or the support player dies, in which case it will vanish in 5 seconds. And now over to the pouches. Each support player carries two ammo pouches which can be thrown over considerable distances and will instantly fill up four units of ammo or gadgets for a single player that picks it up. The individual units can be split across different weapons, for instance if you're missing half a mag of primary ammo, two gadgets from your first slot and one from your second, you will still get an instant and complete refill, something that would take around 16 seconds from a crate. Each support player can place up to three pouches around the map before they start disappearing and after throwing one of the two pouches he carries, it takes six seconds for a new pouch to become available. Pouches remain on the map for 10 seconds after the death of the support who dropped them. 
As I discussed in my video on grenades, link at the end, each grenade has a replenishment timer and once that runs out, picking up ammo from a crate or a pouch will instantly refill the grenade. The slight advantage that the crates have here over the pouches is that they will reduce the timer down to a third. So for instance, if you're crouching next to a crate, refilling a frag grenade takes 12 seconds instead of 36. The thing I highlighted in my last video that not everyone knows though, is that pouches can do the same. As long as the rest of your ammo is full, you don't pick up the pouches and standing next to one will also speed up your grenade timer. So that's the full details on how both of the ammo gadgets work, but which one is better? Well, I guess the fair answer is, it depends, but only just. As mentioned before, if I'm playing Medic, Scout or Assault, the reason to go for a resupply is almost always for gadgets rather than ammo and when you compare being able to get up to 4 gadgets instantly versus 1 every 5 seconds, it's clear which is the better choice for the individual soldier. Pouches can replenish a good chunk of ammo instantly even while on the move and this is very useful in most game modes as well as in emergency situations. If you've just fired all of your rockets and AT grenades at a tank that is trying to get to cover or, even worse, charging at you, the instant refill of a pouch can make all the difference. Having to wait almost a second for each mag of primary ammo and then secondary ammo to fill up before then waiting another 5 seconds for a single rocket is just too slow. In game modes like Conquest, War Pigeons, Domination and Team Deathmatch, Mobility is a key part of the game and sitting out of the action for 30 odd seconds may not seem long but it can make a surprising difference. And even in defensive situations where the crate is at its best, there are frequently problems you can run into. Sometimes the crate is in a risky position and crouching next to it for a refill ends up getting you killed. Sometimes it's in a safe position but it's so safe that you are unable to fight the enemy that's charging at you, allowing them to get into a position close to you from where they can push and overrun you. Fair enough, in game modes where the entire team will frequently end up staying in a single position for a longer period of time, operations, frontlines or supply drop, it can be easier for a support to just slap down a box in a strategic location and then allow his team to resupply themselves. But even in these modes, a large group of players clustering around one spot to refill their ammo can just end up being a juicy target for an enemy vehicle, a mortar or a behemoth shell. And that's the argument I see most of the time. People tell me they use the crates because it's easier. Just slap it down once and forget about it for a while instead of having to throw out another pouch every 6 seconds. I'm not sure this is a great argument though. If you're playing as support because you want to help your team as much as possible or because you want to generate a great score, then pouches are the better choice in my eyes definitely in the more mobile game modes and maybe even in many situations in the more static ones. Being able to resupply a number of teammates at the same time sounds great in theory but I think even this advantage only works if those teammates only need like one gadget each. Let's think about it, say if you're in a full squad playing together and you're the only support, each of your four teammates fires off one gadget and nothing else. In that very specific example, a single crate can give them each their one gadget back in about 5 seconds. With pouches it would take the two you have on you plus 12 seconds for two more to become available. The crate wins, no questions asked. But what if you've just come out of a decent fight and each of the squad members needs two mags and two gadgets? With a crate, it's going to take around 12 seconds for you to resupply them, just as long as with pouches. And with the pouches, the squad can still spread out and cover various angles of your position or even start moving towards the next objective and you can still resupply them just as efficiently. And that's something that the crate just does not allow. 
I really think that there is a balancing issue here and solving the problem could be as easy as giving the crates a single resupply timer of 700 to 950 milliseconds and apply that not just to ammo but also to gadgets. Waiting a second for each gadget to replenish is still slower than the pouches but that small disadvantage I think would be the perfect counterbalance to the small advantages of the crate. So there you have it all the facts on how both of the ammo giving gadgets work in Battlefield 1 and hopefully this info can help you get the most out of either of these tools. In terms of preference of course all the arguments I have presented here are just my opinion. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. Do you prefer the crates? I'd love to hear why. And do let me know which of the support gadgets you want to hear about next. And with that guys, thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next episode.